Welcome. We are here for Trophy Gold. We're going to be playing the Incursion Leviathan's Bridge. And, uh, pardon, I'm Mads, she, they pronouns, and I've run a lot of Trophy Dark. Um, just now starting to get into some Trophy Gold. I had started with Crimson Spire and then now and then going over another third party uh, incursion called uh, Hissing Darkness, which was awesome as well. And so now I'm going back to the core book <laughs> and then like, you know, get, trying my hand at some of the, trof the core Trophy Gold incursions. All right, and so we're doing player introductions. So I'll start from my left um, and go to Michael. Hi, I'm Michael. I use he, him, or they, them pronouns. And I'm pretty new to playing Trophy Gold, so I'm quite excited. Awesome. Let me go over to Mark. Hey, I'm Mark. Uh, he, they pronouns. And uh, I've played and run a lot of Trophy Dark and Gold. And uh, excited to do more with y'all. Yes, awesome. And last but not least, James. Hi everyone, um, I'm James, uh, he, him, and I've played and run quite a lot of trophy gold and written for it. And I love this incursion and I love these kind of medium length setups that Mads has been running and the last one was very successful and I'm looking forward to this one too. <sighs> Hopefully I can bring it to like, you know, the could a uh, good level of success. It's like, you know, we'll see. Still getting used to the nuances between dark and gold. So, I mean, uh, you know, just to start off to make sure that we're all on the same page for expectations, I'm going to do uh, a bit of cats, which is concept, aim, tone, and subject matter. Okay. Um, so again, we're playing the system trophy gold, the specific incursion is called Leviathan's bridge. Trophy gold is a collaborative storytelling game about a group of treasure hunters on a doomed expedition into a place that doesn't want them there. And this game is this game system is by Jesse Ross. Um, Leviathan's Bridge is written by Gabriel Robinson. Concept. So again, Trophy Gold is a game about des desperate treasure hunters entering a forest or other haunted space that doesn't want them there. The aim. You will play treasure hunters motivated by a near impossible goal to seek out riches in the forgotten places of the world. You are not heroes, but entitled pillagers there to secure your wants and needs. Your desperate state encourages you to take dangerous risks and you will often put yourself in harm's way to better your circumstances. The tone. The tone of Trophy Gold is risky and driven. You may encounter conflict or tension between treasure hunters, but more often you will be facing dangers from monsters or the environment itself. Subject matter. This game will be R rated. Your treasure hunters will be willing to make dangerous choices. The game will likely be violent, terrifying, and include scenes of bodily horror and loss of self-control. Call out any other particular subject matter or warnings featured in the incursion you are playing. And let me see if there was like anything. Yes. So content warnings for Leviathan's Bridge are graphic violence, heights, insects and spiders, religion, sharks, and sea creatures. Fun. Gameplay. Game is hala. Huh. The game is highly collaborative and improvisational. Players have a lot of say over the world itself and can introduce story elements that no one, not even the GM, was expecting and play moves between the fiction and metagame frequently. The game runs best when everyone feels comfortable offering up their ideas. It uses six-sided dice of two colors, light and dark, to determine the outcome of risky actions. We do have a character keeper holding all of the uh, characters information and we will be using a dedicated trophy dice roller so we can all see <laughs> our wonderful uh, uh, rolls with the light and dark dice which have meaning depending on the situation okay um, there is a safety tab in our character keeper so that has lines and veils um, lines are things that we will not be including in the game whatsoever um, and veils will be things that could be touched upon in a flashback um, or backstory um, may be mentioned as part of the gameplay, but won't be fully role played and will fade to black. Okay. So the safety tab again. Uh, so hopefully everybody has had a chance to fill in said lines and veils. This is a living document. So if there's any changes, updates, 
or additions, please, 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 you know, uh, just let me know in a DM or, you know, like in the chat. And then we'll go over it again before the beginning of each session, just to make sure that, again, we're kind of watching out for each other. Other safety tools we will be using for the game will be X card, of course. So if anything comes up and it's triggering um, and you're, it's objectionable in an unfun way, you know, please make an X in the video or say X out loud or X in the chat. We will stop play, find out what needs to be X carded and then take that out and then move into a different direction. We will never ask you why you're X carding that particular thing. And then there's, of course, also open door. We are human. We need to do human things. So if at any point you need to open door for um, a few minutes or for the scene or even perhaps for the game, if you find out it's something that's not for you, please feel free and then just open door. Let us know if, uh, excuse me, like, you know, if you're coming back and when, um, but we will never ask you why you're open dooring. Okay. So those are the safety tools. Those are the um, things that we have on the table to keep each other um, uh, consenting and safe while we play. Um, and again, yes, it could, this this could get into some horror elements, but I mean, for the most part, you know, these characters hopefully will survive. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, when we get into the incursion, it's like, we'll see how this goes. All right. Um, okay. So let's take this time. I think everybody's, yep, everybody's complete. Like once I see pictures, I know everybody's, everybody's finished. Um, let's go ahead and take some time to be introduced to the characters. When I call upon you, please introduce your character by name, pronouns. You can mention their occupation, background, and drive if you so choose. Um, if you want to mention their particular rituals, that's cool. Um, but also kind of mention a little bit how they look, like what kind of equipment they're carrying. That would be great. Okay. So I'm going to go in the order of the character keeper, as a matter of fact. Let's go left to right. So, uh, Michael, can you start us off? Sure. I'm playing Vendrick, who uses he, him pronouns. And his occupation is cook. His background is impeached official, and his drive is to rebuild Hisham's fountain. And I picture um, someone a bit older, like in his 50s, with a long gray hair and a gray beard. And um, he's wearing uh, rather light equipment, light armor, has reinforced snakeskin leathers and um, some some light slippers um, that help him navigate quickly and be nimble. And he's got a notched uh, cutlass and a blowgun because he's also skilled in poisons. And uh, for rituals, I've got hospitality, maintain peace while you share food and drink and voice, alter your voice, or make it come from somewhere nearby. Very cool. All right. James, please introduce us. To, and now, is like, are we using his, his full name, or is, which name are we using? <laughs> so um, I'm playing uh, Huja Ilkha, she, her, who is a Nagani's priestess from the deserts of the south which in in trophy world is another continent um and she is a priestess and you could never mistake her for anything other than a priestess because she's wearing sort of ceremonial vestments and a head a headdress with many little beads and a veil and very straight and sort of austere looking indeterminate age and the the Naganese all have these very piercing sort of lavender, like purplish eyes, which is a, the way you can always tell the Naganese uh, at a glance. And she is an awakened dreamer, which is as yet undetermined. Uh, and her drive is to pay the rep reparations for her siblings' curse work. Uh, and her skills are deities, interpretation, manipulation, and foresight. And she has two rituals, uh, release, which is sever your own shadow temporarily to perform a task and absorb 
fill a handheld container with nearby darkness or shadows. And uh, she's here looking for treasure, but perhaps not the same sort of treasure that other treasure hunters are looking at. It's uh, a more discerning sense that there is something of value within Seeker's Rest to be found. Very cool. All right. And Mark, please introduce us to yeah. Macero. Or uh, I'll be playing yeah, Macero, I think. Uh, Macero is uh, currently occupied as a snake. Uh, uh, he is a usurped royal, and he is looking to free the kindly followers of the Piper. Uh, should, be, should be a good time. Um, his skills are charm, trickery, performance, and commands. And uh, yeah, he's got the rituals uh, smite and web. Uh, he's got a grappling to go rope, spyglass, fancy armor, fancy sword, fancy cloak. Just a fancy, fancy boy all around. What a motley crew. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So we're going to be taking, uh, again, these uh, characters through uh, Seeker's Rest. Um, and to the Leviathan's Bridge, hopefully. Um, I'm going to read some bits from the uh, incursion itself. Uh, let me see. Okay. All right, some background here. The floating mangrove city of Seeker's Rest has long been a bastion for reclusive goblin seers and lore masters who sought to protect their sacred texts and accumulated knowledge from pillagers. It serves as a home to all refugees who may not be welcome elsewhere. The layered grove forms the foundation of the city, while the Leviathan's Bridge stretches overhead, an arboreal monument of twisting vines, branches, and the immense weightless bones of a whale, culminating in a temple formed from its massive skull. It is said that generations of seers still sit in eternal contemplation of the glowing star which rests within its cavern. Priceless scriptures and artifacts of an advanced civilization lie scattered within the twisted mangrove, shrouded by mists and largely hidden from the outside world, save the few who find their way there, seeking refuge or wisdom. All right. We start your group at the Marsh Cradle. It's a weaving series of interconnected streams bordered by dense jungle and abandoned settlements. Marsh goats, mud crawlers, and other scavengers lurk among the ruins. The group must navigate through the maze of mangrove roots and sunken dwellings to find the open lagoon and the floating city beyond. You enter this set by canoe. Maneuvering the boat between dense roots and branches may prompt some risk rolls while navigating the shifting maze of the marsh cradle require hunt rolls, changing tide and current making passage unpredictable. All right, your set goal is to locate the drifting mangrove city of Seeker's Rest. So for those unfamiliar with Trophy Gold, the incursion is broken up into different sets and each set has a goal that the characters have to accomplish before they can leave and go into the next set. At any point, they could possibly return to uh, a town point or what have you to, uh, uh, you know, rest or what have you. But if they do and they have not met their burdens, uh, their, uh, their debt, basically, with gold or found equipment that they could sell for gold, then they will have to retire their character <laughs> owing, owing lots of money. Um, so, you know, their basic point for these characters is to get as much treasure as possible and come home with hopefully, uh, you know, some revenue to cover uh, what they've spent so far to do this, do this thing, and then hopefully be able to go back out again uh, and get more riches. So... Again, set goal is to locate the drifting mangrove city of Seeker's Rest to start the uh, start the incursion. You are on a canoe, and there is heavy mist obscuring the way. 
there's bubbles in this murky water, and the stench is very, very sulfurous. What would you like to do? Do we have an idea of the general direction that we're looking to go? Um, you've heard the rumors, like perhaps like, you know, one or two of you have, you know, had some exposure to a, perhaps a map. Um, but, you know, the direction is, again, kind of nebulous because of the mists and because of all the things that are in the water that kind of float and change in the current. Mm. So, I mean, you're welcome to do a hunt roll to see if you can get your bearings and then try and then steer the boat in the direction of where you believe Seeker's Rest is. Who is who's actually, let me, let me, let me uh, try to establish something first. Who is helming the boat? That's one. And who is actually doing the, the, the paddling? <laughs> I imagine Jari so. Is that the bow? <laughs> yes, sorry, guys. Uh, but, but I so didn't catch that, sorry. Bow. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Hadra? Lazar is absolutely not rowing. Um, she is sitting very in right in the middle of the canoe, and and it seems like the mist sort of is burning off as it gets close to her. Um, as and she's looking at her deck of cards and is about to do a telling to find the way. Okay, so I'm I'm paddling then. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a great job. Awesome job. Awesome job. Um, I uh, think I can, I have a spyglass, so I think I will oh, okay. like, use that to kind of like scan the scan the horizon and see if I can figure out which way is uh, a good way to go. All right. So let's go ahead and build the first roll of the game. Um, so if you want to follow along on the reference sheet, um, it has the hunt roll, which we're going to do. So to explore your environment, when you press ever deeper in pursuit of a specific and immediate goal, describe how you're exploring your environment, which it sounds like you're trying to use the spyglass to, again, get your bearings. Mm -hmm. So you would take one light die for exploring the world and asking questions about it. And mm -hmm. then the second light die comes from the equipment that you're using. You could also use a skill, but you'd still only get the one light die for skill or equipment. Okay. Yeah, so I think my spyglass counts for that. Exactly. So you're going to go ahead and do the hunt roll on the dice roller using two light die. Yep. And we can still get see. Solid start. Nice. Six. six. Six light. So you succeed for sure. And you gain one hunt token. Oh, yeah. And the tokens can be traded at any point to get a treasure or to. Uh, was it um get some information okay mm -hmm. um so things to know about the hunt tokens is that you may want to try to cash them in you know as soon as you get like one or two um because there's always the possibility of getting a bad roll that could make you lose all of your hunt tokens and you encounter something terrible so mm -hmm. you know it just pays to have you know things that you find but if you do pool them amongst you and you get up to three hunt tokens pooled together, then you can, you know, put them towards resolving the set, right? So like, you know, putting in three hunt tokens automatically, automatically resolves that particular set, set goal. Okay. So, all right. With a six. Okay. So I think... Yeah, I think in your in your in your seeing and through the spyglass, you're able to get um, bearings off of a small um, barge that you see in the distance. Like as the mists part, mm -hmm. there's like a there's like seems to be like a, like broken pots on it, um, but you do spot there's like a chest, like kind of 
hanging off of like you know one of the one of the windows or something but it's half sunken in mud so i mean at least at the very least it's like you kind of have a marker of like further along that you can kind of go to and then like you know get your bearings from there so there's there's that possibility of getting to that particular um uh bit in the distance well yeah i'll announce that to our crew and uh, encourage vendrick to point us in that direction <laughs> She says, um, in a sarcastic voice, I, I. <laughs> and that doesn't stop you from, 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 doesn't stop anybody else from making hunt rolls as well, if you choose. So, I mean, <clears throat> again, like now you have a direction that you're pointing towards, so you're going to, towards that small barge wreckage. Hmm. I think Vendrick and Misera would have established so far that Hujar doesn't really speak unless she has something to say. So she's just sitting there looking at her cards. And um, with your permission, Mads, is it okay when I do a, a hunt roller if I just like pick a card and then you can make of it what you will, or like if depending on the results, and then I do the roll? Um, let's see. Yeah, because I mean, like, Ooh. you're not. Well, hold on. What's the uh? I don't have it pulled up. I have the I have the uh, the reference that you're referring to, but I don't have it. I mean, I can just sort of use it as flavor text, basically. But mm -hmm. I, I was thinking, because the the deck is it's her weapon, but it's also like a death deck of tarot in the in the world of trophy. The sisters are the tarot, so Ooh. I think the one that she draws and places down is Saint Amsa, the patron of wayfarers. Ooh. And she tries to to do the the and I'm and I'm thinking I'm gonna use um foresight as my skill to try and get an extra die. Okay. All right. So your particular uh question is to get a beat. Like on... does... mm -hmm, yeah, ahead. I'm sort of I'm sort of asking Saint Amsa or like evoking the the, the, the Saint the sister to tell us the way through the you know, through the swamp basically. Okay. All right. And then so go ahead and make the hunt roll with two die, please. I've got a six. Nice. I'm not going to say anything, but <laughs> you get a token. So that's cool. Um, yeah. I think beyond that, I think that, uh, excuse me, beyond the, um, the barge, perhaps, like, you know, we're pointing, you're pointing in one direction, heading towards the barge. But I think maybe, you know, as you're looking with your, with your beautiful eyes, you know, through the, through the mist and the trees, it's like you happen to notice that there is a floating mangrove tree further along and you see of all things a small golden monkey sitting still in its upper branches you can't tell whether it's actually alive or it's some kind of statuary but i mean it's it's there and the tree is floating i think Kudja just slowly Put, puts her finger up and points and uh, with, with her index finger, which has got quite a long fingernail and points in that direction and then sort of withdraws her hand. And I'm, yeah, again, it's like, you know, uh, at any point you can put in your hunt token, you can cash in your hunt token for something that you find as a treasure. So again, that's that that's a way to earn gold for your uh, towards your burdens. Okay. Um, and, and would that directly translate into gold or would mm -hmm, it be mm -hmm. an item? Okay. Well, I mean, like it, it turns into an item mm -hmm. um, that that you find but then i will tell you what the value is when you sell it off at any point right um 
so you would keep that in your found item list and then like you know it, like it will have a value that will be able to be put towards your burdens okay, okay so i don't put it in the gold you don't, section right you don't put it in the gold section gold section is what i consider what is reserved for once you fight a creature and you earn some gold <laughs> that's what mm. that's what the gold is that's where the gold comes from unless like you do happen to find a treasure that is strictly called gold <laughs> okay so okay. yeah absolutely Okay. Mm, I think so. I want mm -hmm. to um, make a hunt roll as well. Okay. So basically, since it's hard to um, to see amongst the mists, mm -hmm. I want to try and improvise and um, actually close my eyes because there's no point of looking anywhere <laughs> i accept that all right <gasps> and i want to see if i can hear anything smelly thing unusual you know Ooh, yeah that's that's very cool because it's like you know cook comes into play so who knows who knows um so go ahead and uh, make your hunt roll like just to just to see what you find with fortune's nose um mm -hmm. yeah so two light die on the hunt yeah uh, that's another six <laughs> wow Oh my god if anybody wants to screenshot this i mean like you know like you two have who have played this before know how how very very strange this is okay you get a token all right great um yeah i think what you smell let me see You smell like <clears throat> the usual marsh scents. It's like kind of like mildew and like this humid uh, hanging plant smell. But then like you also get the whiff of something very sweet, like something of the, of the mangrove. And it's, it's heady. It's like you're getting like you know strong whiffs of it like in between like this this cloying mist that seems to be like kind of like surrounding you but uh you're in the direction that you're finding yourselves i mean you're heading towards the small barge um and i think <laughs> you since your eyes are closed i think you know as you're smelling the mangrove like you're going in the right direction and then boom you're bumped into the into the barge <laughs> So, um, you're here, but for Hudyar, you're, you're seeing the, um, you're still seeing the vision of the floating mangrove tree beyond the barge in the same direction. So heading in the right place. So you said there was a, there was a, like a, a chest hanging off the barge. Mm -hmm. Sealed traveler's chest, half sunken Ooh. in the mud. Beyond. I'm, I'm quite interested in that. Okay. All right. So, do you come off of the the of uh, the? I can't speak. Off of the canoe and then yeah. like try to get onto the barge. Yeah, if we can like bump the canoe up to the barge. Oh, uh, like yeah, basically, yeah. Vendrick again through like closed yeah. eyes is like totally <laughs> bumped into the barge. Um, yeah, kind of hop off the prow and yep. uh, see if I can get my footing on the barge there and get at that chest. Like if, if it's hung over, like haul it up to the deck. Um, it's, it's kind of sunken in there and mm, it's like, like in this, in it's a particularly squelchy part of the, mm. of the barge because I mean, like it's sunken in the mud, you've bumped into it and you can, you can bounce from the, from the canoe and then go onto the barge. But there's like some serious dangers because again, this is wreckage mm -hmm. and because it's sunk, you're not sure how stable this is. So I'm going to call for a risk roll at this point. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Uh, hold on. Risk scroll. Let's build yeah. this. Yeah, I go uh, <laughs> again, because of the squelchy nature and because it's half sunken in mud, you're not sure how secure your footing will be when you do this excited thing. Mm -hmm. um, so let me ask each of the other players, what do you think can go wrong? This is how we build a risk scroll. <laughs> uh, 
I think that what definitely can go wrong is that you uh, you crash into the barge and you get stuck in the mud underneath, mm -hmm. which is why I got which is why I got wrecked in the first place. Um, the that's... more I have an idea for a devil's bargain, but I think the more extreme version of it is that um, there's a, a big sort of colony of of some kind of. Um, <laughs> And then leeches or something. Yeah. Or, or they are, the something, some, there's a colony of something that are living underneath the, the mud, um, yes. just being a rich mm -hmm. biosphere. And they Whoops. don't like that you moved their, their house. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I think. Um what could go wrong is when you when you approach and get closer you realize it's not actually a chest it's, um uh carnivorous uh plants luring you mm. in oh man <laughs> amazing that's great. that's great okay cool so now we gather the dice uh mm -hmm. so uh light die if this is something that you are skilled at because of your occupation or background or if you have useful equipment that's a great uh question um i think the the it makes oh man, I'm, performance is tempting, but I think I'm gonna go with, go with my prep and go again rope. Okay, okay, cool. All right, mm. all right. So you're using your grappling hook and rope, which makes sense, absolutely. Yeah. Um, dark die because you're risking your body for sure. I mean, we don't know what's what's going on with this barge, so you could just as easily crash through it and meet those dangers that we just said. And then your light die is for accepting a another light die is for accepting a devil's bargain and that is no bargain. matter what what do we want to offer Macero? my idea is that no matter what just expanding on the i, I saw the the crab hands which is uh destiny now because i think that the chest although it may have treasure in it is in fact the shell of a sort of large coconut crab like arthropod with a small, you know, uh, back end and a very large series of claws and legs on the front end that are under the mud. Oh my god, amazing. That's great. That's, that's, okay, so that's a, that's a devil's bargain. Um, <clears throat> I think... I mean, I'm just gonna go with it with the with the with the basic tried and true. It's like you're gonna lose you're gonna lose your grappling hook to the to the mm. sucking, uh, you know, mud of the marsh trying to get stability. Um, uh, so you'll have to cross that off. Yeah. No matter what, I think you'll find an item that belongs to a person. We will meet in the city we're going to, or in the, in the settlement, and they Ooh. they can sense it. you got it. Oh shit! <laughs> That's really tempting. Oh my god! <laughs> I think I would have to go with that one. Yeah. Oh my gosh! That's really great. great. Ooh, nice. Oh, I love the crab. <laughs> oh my god! Oh yeah, the crab thing was like sounded amazing. It's so. amazing. Okay, so you're taking the item for person to meet in the city. Okay. All right. So go ahead and make your roll with two light, one dark, please. That's a four light. So four light. Uh, you can add a dark die and re-roll. Risk it for a biscuit. Mm -hmm. But you have to go with whatever <laughs> whatever you get for that for that next roll. <laughs> I think I'm gonna do it. Why not? Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, we're we're, we're starting off strong, right? Risky, risky. Yeah, there's a five dark. Five dark, and then so we stop because uh, yeah. dark is always high. So uh, if this is higher than your ruin, your ruin goes up by one. There sure is. There we sure go. There is. So you do you do succeed. There's complication, of course. Um, tell mm. me though, how, like, what you see or or sense that 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 makes you a little bit you know, closer to the, uh, the environment, to the being lost to the I think, forest. I think that this is his first kind of like foray out here. Um, <laughs> and so he's still got a lot of like, uh, 
like bravado and confidence and so it just like does the whoo uh, hops over and like as when he lands like his foot just goes through the rotten board of the deck and i think like it's hard to tell if, like his foot gets stuck in mud or like gets caught and is grabbed by something or like a, a vine or root or something and i think the bravado immediately drops as soon as like his boot, his fancy boot gets stuck in whatever's down there and pulls out he's just like oh i think oh no this is not going to be the fun adventure that i think it's going to be <laughs> i think this is going to be way worse than i thought it was but i have to keep up a good uh, good face and can't turn back oh no what have i done what a terrible mistake <laughs> I mean, you must really want to free these kindly followers because, like, oh, yeah. why would a pretty boy like you be out here in a miserable, dingy place mm -hmm. like this? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So I think, <clears throat> yeah, I think you're you're um, like if you have like any kind of like ornamentation on your boots or what have you, like, I'm definitely being sucked sucked yeah. down in this particular like thing. It. Right, but I'm also going to say that you do manage to get your footing and then come onto, onto the boat to chest. Um, but I think you're also getting tangled a little bit in the in the net. Like it's you, it's it's literally like foot gets caught. You trip over the chest, which you can now see is in a tangle of nets. Mm. So you're gonna need help to get it out if this is what you're trying to do. Yeah. for sure now i just want to point out like each of you have a hunt token so conceivably i mean like you know you could you know cash that in and like you know resolve the set and then like you know you see the locate you locate the drifting mangrove city not without a little bit of pain of course but i mean like you you will solve the set goal mm -hmm. um or trade it in you know for something that you find here on the barge right so several different things you, uh, a couple different things you can do What do you think? And was there anything inside the chest? Oh, it, he he can't get it out by himself because it is oh, tangled up enough. in nets. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. now we get it. Okay. Yeah, I like start like yanking out the nets, like a little hope over here. Vendrick. <laughs> sure. And he's jumping over there. I think while this is going on, you can see through the veil that Bajar's giving you this look like you've committed a social faux pas at a, like a banquet or something, like mm -hmm. sort of partially disdainful, partially pitying. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Nagade people are so snotty. <laughs> I just gotta say, sorry. Um, oh, that's nice. Because Becero has essentially like helped <laughs> secure <laughs> the footing or whatever, uh, you know, finding finding that little uh, bit of uh, business, I think I, I'm not going to make you do a, a risk roll, um, hmm. at least not yet, Vendrick. Um, but you can come definitely come out and like you know help uh, help him uh, try to get the the um, uh, Just... chest out. Yeah, sorry. It is. It is again in a tangle of nets, and it is. It looks like it's sealed. Mm. Like it has, like... So, so I've got a, um, a skinning knife, and I'm gonna cut loose the net. Okay. Great. And then we we manage to get it out of the mud. Yeah. Out up on the deck of the barge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <clears throat> this thing open and see what we got. Okay. And I, you guys, thinking of cashing in our tokens for the set goal, or rather um, stay a bit in the set? That is um, you. There's also the the floating mangrove tree, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. like to see the mangrove tree. I mean, yeah. I, I'd be wouldn't be averse to solving the set, but I'd just kind of like play it out a little bit first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if you cash, even if you decide to cash them in now, I'm like, I'm, if you do want to still explore the floating mangrove tree, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take that away from you. Like after you explore the, the mangrove tree place, like, you know, you will from there locate the, the drifting mangrove city. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you can totally cash them in to solve the set, but mm -hmm. you can totally go to the mangrove tree <clears throat> first before you do that. Okay. okay. And and the city is floating too. 
uh, in the sky, or uh, is it? Yeah, I mean, it's basic. Yeah, it's it's basically floating. It's drifting. Mm. In the swamp. In the uh... yeah. Oh, in the swamp. Okay, okay. Yeah, it moves. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, um, okay, last question. Mm -hmm. Does it matter yeah. how many hunt tokens I cash in for treasure? Is it like, does it get better? Uh, uh, no. If I, I put mean, in two? No. All? I mean, like, you, like, you know, like for the most part, you will, you will get like, uh, like a treasure for each hunt token, which is usually equaling one gold when you eventually sell it off if okay, it's something good. really special like if it gives me like a specific oh my god this is like you know five gold or something like that then i might say eh, you may want to have a little bit more than just one <laughs> you okay, know? Okay. but i mean again it's like that's very weird circumstances so okay um i think when i i we, we managed to break um open the chest and mm -hmm. i'm going to cash in because i suppose there's more than one thing inside uh one of my hunt, oh, my hunt token for treasure okay so i mean like is the is the goal to um like get more hunt tokens to to resolve the set because like i think once you once you, if you if you cash in the hunt token for a like a specific treasure then like you know obviously you can't use it towards um doing the the res resolution of the set goal yeah okay all right no it's fine i mean like i just want to make sure so again just keep doing hunt rolls <laughs> yeah yeah exactly okay. all right so the, your are cashing... you need a roll to, do you need a roll to get the chest open or can they just open it um i'm gonna say you know like in this particular case um Let's just go ahead and, like, you know, have you guys, I mean, especially if you're, hold on, let me think a minute. We, we hold it up at the chest to get your skinny knife. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you've released it from the, from the net, so it's kind of like, it's fine, like, you know, you can, you can get into the, in, into the chest. I'm not, you know what, I'm not going to make you, I'm not going to make you, like, use, use a hunt token for that, mm -hmm. just because it's like, I always think of, like, you know, when you're trading in hunt tokens, it's something you specifically found, as opposed right. to, like, out of like, this, yep. out of a sealed chest. Okay, so, something no extra worries. Kind of, yeah. yeah, 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 no worries. So, let's go ahead and just give, get, get you some stuff from this, from this particular chest. <clears throat> Weirdly enough, it is, it was sealed not only with like, you know, a lock or whatever, it's like maybe you're able to jimmy it open or whatever, but I mean like, you know, it seemed to have like some sort of like wax, um, like wax melted on it to make sure it, like, it was a little bit harder or maybe like a little bit more waterproof. Um, and when you bust it open, you see for some reason, and hold on, let me just check the check the safety, just so you know. Give me a second. Okay, we're good. Um, yeah, you see a small feline skull, but Ooh. it's mineralized to the point where it's like the bone has... It's studded with precious crystals. Like it shines and glimmers in the very dim, misty light. And it sits on like kind of damp velvet. And that's what you find here. But then also like in the inside of the top of the case, you see what looks like a map case. Mm. And then when you break that open, there seems to be an incomplete chart of this region. Someone was trying to map this place, but uh, obviously didn't get finished. There seems to be some markings in blue ink, um, with, with, uh, water stains on it. And those might be the possible locations of an island. You're not sure. Then Quen Hoodja sees the skull come out of the box. She kind of recoils a bit and goes, and, um, and then says, like, I would not touch that with your bare skin if I were you. 
You know what, Macero? Um, since you found the chest, why don't you take um, the skull? It seems more precious, <laughs> more... <laughs> and I'll, I'll take the map. Okay. Sounds fantastic. Alright. Yeah, and so... you take the skull, I get it smaller. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so go ahead and add that particular thing to your uh, found equipment, Macero, and with the map case, go ahead and put that in your... Um, in your found equipment, Vendrick. Yeah. Mm. So Incomplete a... map of the region. Yeah. <coughs> mm, okay. Is it like cool. a, uh, a like a house cat skull, or is it like a feline yeah, it, skull? Yeah, it says a small like feline a... skull. Well, okay. I mean, like it could be. Well, I mean, there might be a creature here in the Caldor right. that is that has got like you know feline uh, uh, like a bobcat features or... and structure. Yeah, but I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's uh, it's small enough that you're able to like you know yeah. put it in a in a bag or a pouch or something like that. If you if you deign to have a backpack, I have no idea. Like you know, whatever, whatever fancy boys got, you know. Fancy it's fine. <laughs> and uh, I think um, you know, Hujar, you're you're uh, seeing that floating mangrove tree just kind of enticing you. And the small golden monkey doesn't seem to have moved, but again, it gleams. It gleams in the mist. I think Kudja lifts her long fingernail again and says, um, the lady tells us where to go. <clears throat> Wait, which lady? Vendrick asks. Mm. Of the blood self so bizarre. <clears throat> She of the dark knife. She of the long way. The wayfarer. Sure. About ninety percent of what she says is extremely gnomic and like obscure. Oh. <laughs> <Yep>. uh <-huh. laughs> I mean, well, let's go check out your tree then. If that's yeah. what the lady says to do. Hop back in the boat. Yeah, you're not sure yet, Vendrick, if you can get any bearings from this particular map. But I mean, it could be useful if you decide to add to it, right? Mm. So, yeah, that's something to think about. Um, yep. But yeah. Get hop back into the canoe and then you can mm. head over to the mangrove tree. Yeah. I think as you're making your way over to the tree, I think you see a pale blue heron studying the water and it's all of a sudden you see it stab down its beak and impale a soft young turtle as you make your way over to the tree the mists do part a little bit but not enough to feel like you're getting a good uh, bead on anything there's shapes here that you see beyond your goal and again just seems to be shifting in the light but you do make it to the mangrove tree. And there are, again, it has upper branches here that, that just seem to be still, but then also swaying in a breeze that you can't feel. And there is a golden monkey sitting there, it's still kind of uh, just sitting, uh, gazing down at you not sure if it's actually alive or if it's just a piece of statuary that somebody put up in there but yeah it's just mm. looking at you looking at you all should we throw something at it to see if it's alive i think um Hajar is going to draw the card of Saint Ursula, the unrivaled of the saint of hunting and wrestling, and show it to the monkey like a question. 
Would you want to call that a hunt roll? <clears throat> I guess it's a hunt roll, because I want to see what the monkey does. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, yep. Uh, light die for seeing what the monkey does, and, and light die for your card uh, card pull. All right. Well, perhaps interpretation would might might be more appropriate here because the card's technically not an item; it's like a weapon. Although, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so. Mm. Oh, I, I I got a terrible, terrible snake eyes. So I think we're about to find out what the card means. And you've lost a hunt token. Damn it! <laughs> oh. Uh, well, perfect well, but, example but, of what happens. <laughs> yeah, we we didn't we didn't spend them yet, so. I, I don't have, we don't have enough now, so we're going to need some more. Yeah, mm. definitely. <laughs> uh, okay. Good yar. Okay. Encountering something terrible. Okay. I think... I think the, the golden monkey will actually like turn its head to look at the card that you hold in your hand Hood Yar. and it looks down at you and opens its mouth but instead of saying something in it will open its mouth but then its two long arms are going to take something from the trees and fling them furiously down around the boat not at you but like down around the boat and then it creates movement in the water and then you see that there are these fish you see these well I should say first you see the bulging eyes surrounding the canoe and they are popping up and these are not small fish I think one would be considered like almost dog sized, big dog sized. If given the, given the size of the eyes and maybe one will in response to the things flung in the water, like it opens up a very cavernous toothy maw that drips <laughs> marsh water from it. And this is what surrounds the boat. What do you all do? Are we in combat yet, or do we have a chance to do something before uh, that happens? Well, okay, so you're all in. Okay, so combat have role. An idea, yeah. Okay, so two things that can happen at this point. You could do something risky like with a ritual or what have you to help mm. reduce endurance before you enter combat completely um, because you all can see these fish okay that are surrounding the boat and you can again reduce endurance somehow you would tell me how and then we would enact a, a risk roll and then when we get into the combat role that then the the combat would go in with the monster having the monsters whatever having reduced endurance so your choice what would you like to do but uh, we will come to was... hunt roll before to to figure out anything or... uh no i mean so to to take an action to reduce endurance like these are monsters that you will be you're, that you are facing right now okay so okay, to we have engage... to fight right so i mean like you know you would either go straight into combat or mm. if you wanted to reduce their endurance to make them softer and easier to to take out then yes it would engage risk rolls whether by using uh, something uh, like a weapon or to do um uh, rituals something <clears throat> right so sure. did you say there's two of them or there's a bunch of them around us I'm considering them like, you know, like, let's say that there's about three of them around you, but I'm okay. doing them as a collective. Right, right. So you would basically be reducing the endurance of them as a group. Yeah. Okay. I have an idea for a ritual. You know, you know I love to reduce endurance. Of course. That, that's, I, I, I would love to do it too. <laughs> so what would you like to do? 
I think there's um Hoja, you see Hoja standing like up in the boat and anyone who can see is that she previously had a shadow that was sort of, you know, like the sun, low sun coming through the mangroves was casting a shadow into the water. There's no shadow anymore. Uh, but in the water, there's another shape swimming. Like a, and then it's sort of like a, a vaguely fish-like, vaguely sort of, you know, reptilian shape of shadow, and it's circling the other fish. And it looks like it too would like to have a meal. Awesome. All righty. So, <clears throat> of course, with a, any risk roll, we we say what's going to go wrong, right? <clears throat> so, um, what could go wrong is the fish attack the shadow, and you heal the pain. You, know, it's... you what? If the if the shadow is attacking the fish, mm -hmm. uh, and the fish uh, bite down or attack the shadow, then you feel the pain of it. Oh, you feel the pain, yeah. Uh, it's my shadow, so that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're definitely going to get some 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 uh, physical feedback from that. Sure. Um, what else can go wrong? Uh, I think the ensuing like battle with your shadow will definitely upturn the canoe that could definitely go wrong um, turns out those fish creatures whatever they they are really into anything magical mm. so this will attract more of them Ooh, bad okay Let's gather dice. Light die. If your task is something you are skilled at because of your occupation or background, or if you have useful equipment. So you are... I think I'm going to make a case for manipulation, because this is a faint, basically. Like, yep. it's a trick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Distracting them so this way you can split them right. up or, or what have you mm. to reduce their endurance. All right, and then dark die because you are anytime you use a ritual of any sort, you are risking your mind and body for sure. And then uh, light die for accepting a devil's bargain. What happens no matter what? What do we think? I'm gonna say that any uh, any reaction from these monstrous fish to your shadow will appear physically you will not only feel the pain but you you will see the results of their of their fight Ooh. with your shadow oh so the shadow is alter altered yeah. afterwards yeah okay i was thinking of something similar mm -hmm. i think no matter what the monkey will get away yeah. And we have say. to look for them again. Masero, anything? Mm -hmm. I was going to do the monkey thing. Um... <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> yeah, I was going to do Matz's thing. Um, no matter what, one of the fishes winds up in the boat with us. <gasps> oh, crap. A doodle do. <laughs> <laughs> Which of these DBs do you want? <laughs> it's far too good in terms of just like the drama of the combat. So I have to take that one just for the op the look of it, you know. Mm -hmm. Fish oh, gets into a boat. Okay. And we get a better look at it. Oh, yeah. It's also cool. Oh, yeah. So gross. Okay. It's much bigger so, than we thought. <laughs> right, right, right. So if if you succeed with this risk roll, like you will reduce their endurance by one. And anyone can Depending do a risk on... roll to, to, to do. Isn't but... it two if it's like a super it's two if it's roll? Six, yeah. Yes, two if it's six. Yep. Mm. Okay. Go All forward. right, come on. Go, you good thing. Two light one. Oh, I got three. Mm. Oh, you can add a that's, dark die and reroll. Me. Oh, you know me, Matt. You know yes, I'm totally going to add dark, though. Please do. Too light, too dark. 
No, it's still. Uh, I'll take a five. That's fine. A light five. That'll light do. five. <laughs> light five. Although I just, I love it when we get to like light fives because it's like you can add a dark die and re-roll, mm-hmm. and it's like it's giving you that that like uh-huh. you know like moving eyebrow you. thing. <laughs> one one endurance reduction is enough for me. You don't have to. I I I'm not playing this game now. No, it's okay. I, oh, I think I'll, I'll stick with that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um. But I think I will say that you know your shadow. Well, tell me how. Tell me how how it looks like when you're when you're calling upon this ritual, and then like you know what the shadow is doing in the water. Like what are you telling it to do? Before I, I tell you, thing, what... like <laughs> anyone who sees like Kudja will see that she's kind of slightly swaying on her feet and like muttering something, whispering something, and her eyes have just gone like pearly white. And the shadow takes the form of a, um, yeah, like it's it's sort of amorphous, but it looks a little bit like a a pike or something, a little like a shark, a little like a, you know, like a serpent. You know, it's sort of a a you know unformed, but it sort of circles the fish and darts at them and attacks them and goads them. I think it's goading it so much that it's like the one that is opposite it is actually taking a flying leap onto the boat (laughs) which Mm -hmm. is why it ends up in the canoe again this is quite uh quite dog sized and you can see it all in its like you know wonderful mud colored and covered glory um it's again the bulging eyes are just like you know like you know like very bulbous and like the maw is just like 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 all te- like all teeth very cavernous looking and the f- there's front strong front flippers that are like allowing it to flop onto the boat and you can <laughs> see these are pretty strong that they're able to you know get onto the canoe and then like almost there's like little tiny claws on it enough to be able to get purchase these are things that could chase you on land <laughs> So if anybody yeah, wants to take a risk Muncie roll and like do something move. about it here, <laughs> you know. move real fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, like you know, because it's right here, it was like so, you know, desperate and involved. I mean, you could conceivably somebody could else could do a risk roll to reduce endurance even more if you want. I mean, do we know how high it is? So, is are you going to tell us when we enter combat? Uh, I just wanted to give to, to give the uh, to give the opportunity if you want to do like you know uh, another uh, yeah, endurance but, but, reduction. Um, the other two are way. the other is, two is are it like circling. hidden information. What endurance they have? Um, since I'm know. not used to the game. Um, so oh sure. Just... Now, do I, like do like you know do you guys like you know reveal endurance like right away or or do you keep it hidden until like usually... like <clears throat> they reduce they reduce all the way and as much as they want. Yeah, I usually keep it until after. Like okay, cool. and then that, that's part of like the uh, knowing something about the monster. Yeah. Cool, I like that. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Weaknesses. So yeah, I'm giving um, you an opportunity to weaknesses. reduce a little bit more. <laughs> what what weaknesses might it have? Um, well, it's it's pretty. I mean, it, it's it's very fleshy. Like I said, yeah. I mean, it's just covered over in mud, but it's like it's very it's very uh, bloated looking. <clears throat> okay, I, I've got an idea for. Um, figuring out what it is so kind of um i try to get closer get a better look mm-hmm. because i've got a codex of beasts and i picture it as a water clogged uh, tome since uh, <laughs> some some water has splashed on the on the canoe and i i I try to flip through it as fast as I can and compare <laughs> illustrations. I love it. I love it. No, I love Is it. Is it this one? No. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, like, also you're a cook, so I mean, like, you know, you, you mm. might have seen something like this, <laughs> you know, in cooking. So I'm I mean, like, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like <laughs> this makes great sushi. All right, great. Um, <laughs> Risking, I'm going to say automatically what could go wrong is that it's like, you know, like as you're trying to figure this out, it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to get a chance to, to figure this out. It's going to take a swat at you, right? Mm. You know, and then we can enter combat. But I mean, again, that's like if it goes way, way, way wrong. <laughs> um, 
if anybody wants to add anything extra that could go wrong, that's fine. And then that's we can gather right. dice. Okay, so let's gather some dice. Take a light die if the task is something you are skilled at because of either your occupation, background, or your useful equipment. You sound like you're using your your book, so that is perfectly yep. fine. Dark die if you're risking your mind or body. Body? Okay. Because <laughs> this thing's going to take us out of you. And then your second light die comes from accepting a devil's bargain. What will happen no matter what? <laughs> um, even even if you reduce the actual endurance of it, something about its description, like it's just way worse than we thought it was going to be. <laughs> hmm. Like even if it makes it easier to defeat, like there's something about it that is uh, bad bad news. Like, if those creatures are around, something else might be yeah. around. <clears throat> oh, wow. Amazing. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I like that so much, I don't have anything else to add, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw myself behind that one, too. Yeah, no, like, I'm going to throw myself behind that one, too. I mean, but, oh, like, I should, like, I should mention, just like Trophy Dark, you don't have to accept a Devil's Bargain. It just means yeah. that you will not get that second light die. So, but uh, but I, I like the idea. So I'm gonna. Okay. It. All right. So you discover something even more. Something more. Yeah. About it. Okay. And this is for Vendrick. Mm. Okay. So, <clears throat> two light, one dark, please, on a risk roll. Yes. What's a four? Light. Okay. So, yeah, if four, if the light is is high, then you do have the option of adding a dark die and rerolling. <laughs> so it would be too light, too dark. Yeah, but four is a success, isn't it? With complication. A partial success, right? Yeah, partial success. So I think you are able to find out that. So you are able to find out, like, you know, through your <laughs> like, I read, look at the book. It's like you find something fairly close. And you know that this thing is... Um, you know this thing has, like, very soft, bloaty flesh and easily cuttable in that mm. case. However, if this is similar to the thing that you that you see in your book that you remember from cooking... I'm just going to pull from a real life example. It's like, you know, poison, poison, tasty fish. You better be careful about where you where you strike because otherwise it's going to spurt out poison. <clears throat> it's dangerous to to the touch. Yeah. Mm, that's cool. So, I think I'll I'll just take um the four. Okay. And that's that's the complication. Is like you find out like you got to be careful like when you're when you're striking this thing because it could be like you know exposure to that to that poisonous part of the flesh could be bad for sure. Okay. Um, all right. So that reduces by another. Well, Sarah, do you want to do any reduction or like do are you? Are I'm pretty good there? right now. Yeah. Okay. Great. Delicious. I've got, a, I've got a big pointy thing. Let's <laughs> stick it. Okay. So the way this works, and I will say that you have reduced the endurance to six, okay? Ooh. Normally I make it more more mysterious, but like, you know, for, for Michael's sake, who hasn't <laughs> played this before, I think it's fun to know. All right. So for this first combat role, uh, we decide who participates. Uh, so when you attempt to defeat a monster, you will join your efforts with your fellow treasure hunters. Decide who's going to be doing it, because then that's going to say we would determine, you know, like that that like kind of helps the die roll mechanically basically so if everybody is participating in some way each of you have to say how you expose yourself to injury or attack so and if you want to sit it out you can it's just you can't contribute to the role <clears throat> so um, i'm exposing myself to my attack uh, i'm exposing uh, yes myself you're you're, to you're right there sure 
uh, because uh, I'm, I'm overconfident. And she's like, I'm just going to go in and stab this oh, thing. Oh, you're so. Oh my. You said something about poison. That's eh, probably fine. <laughs> Confidence, overconfidence. Yeah. Your hubris. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we got Macero. Who else? I think I'm close by. Um... Again, the, the the fish flopped onto the canoe right in front of you. So yeah. <laughs> get a close look at it. All right. Who are you contributing? And so. <laughs> For combat, I think I have to wait around, don't I, if I've been casting a ritual into combat. Do I? I don't know. I don't, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not no, gonna. It's just... I, I think you don't have to. No, I mean, like, mm. like if you, if you want to, to I know. participate in awakening. No, she this says is. You this... may not directly participate in the combat role, instead make a risk scroll. Okay. Mm. So I have to wait till round two um, if if I'm joining in. Okay. And so right. so so does anyone who's done a risk roll. Oh really? Oh, I see. Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, let's have at it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not pulled on that rule. Can you tell? Can you tell? It's like I don't I don't read I don't read books very much. Okay, it's great. <clears throat> it's fine. Okay. So basically, <laughs> Masero. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, okay. So you are going to roll a weak point. Three. Okay. So your weak point is three. Now, to do this, Mar. Okay, hold on. Gather dice. Dark die for each character involved. So in this case, it's only one. So <clears throat> for the weapon that they can use in combat, which you do. And then, yeah. And then so you only roll one die to see if I you can do this. Yes. <laughs> uh, <sighs> boom. A five. Not a three. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So like you don't have to worry about uh, being exposed to injury, but the endurance is not five or less so you still have another round to go of combat and then this is the one where pe folks can can enter in okay so <clears throat> uh now like if vendrick and hudyar want to join the fight they have to say how they're going to expose themselves to injury or attack and then they would roll a weak point okay i think since we're not just fighting the one on the canoe Right, mm -hmm. yeah. We're, we're fighting the others like all well. three, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Again, I, collective. I do have the impression, uh, Masero is able to handle that one on mm -hmm. the canoe, the fish, yeah. and I'm gonna try to to stab at the ones in the water. Okay. I'm gonna slightly lean over the canoe, so that's oh. my weakness, my weak point, and I'm perfect. Gonna okay, great. And. That's a six. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. We'll see. Oh, boy. Um, and, Huja, are you, are, you, uh, are you going to be contributing to the combat? No, I will continue to use my shadow fish to fight them, um, mm -hmm. which is used, just used, used as a weapon, basically. Okay. Okay. Please roll a weak point. Okay. On this round, the, we roll an extra die, so we'd be rolling four. Is that right? That is correct. That is correct. I think Masaro has decided that he has done his part by poking the fish in the boat and will withdraw from the combat, passing his weak point off to, um, uh, well, Zendrick can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so Ouch. does this mean, like, it, like if, 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 if uh, he if he gets if there's a three or a six then then he's then he mm -hmm. oh shit <laughs> stabbed great I did my part here we are oh my god <laughs> okay yeah, you, so you did the rest oh my mm -hmm. god so yeah let's go let's <sighs> just go over that particular uh... <laughs> I'm, I'm used to dueling which is like a one hit okay I tagged oh my it, gosh so great that makes perfect sense like you know that that makes perfect sense like, character wise but damn i mean yeah that's... so so again the mechanic is 
if you decide to sit it out like and run away, then you pass off your weak point to whomever is involved in the fight, like to a, a, a character in the fight. Shit. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. No worries. It's fun. All right. So then that means that... <laughs> I've Vendrick... never done that before. I just want to see what it does. <laughs> wow. Okay. It begins. All right. Um, so I guess in this case, it would be Vendrick rolling. So Vendrick, you're going to be rolling with three dice. Three, okay, because uh, it's the second round and we've got th two people in a combat? Two people, but I mean, for every round that we do, then we add another. Oh, d d yeah. Every additional round gets... Ad another additional, additional die, cool. yes, an additional dark die, so... I will roll. Combat with three, yep. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my weak point. Uh, <laughs> I've okay. got two sixes, but I've got armor, two, so. si two six. Oh, God. Okay, so anyway, the monster is definitely defeated if endurance is 12 or less, <clears throat> for sure. Yeah. So please tell me how you two are are, are uh, taking these creatures out. Um, we'll start with um, Brain. We'll start with Hujar first, and then mm. uh, Vendrick, you'll tell me how you done did the killing blow but then because you've gained some ruin wait what <laughs> wait what Ch checking no, armor might be on. good at this point yeah <laughs> oh yeah okay so all right so hold on let, let, before we get before up. we get into the narrative part of this like i have to address this mechanically because this is horrible so so vendrick rolled two sixes and a one but even though it's a brilliant success this is amazing because the weak point is six you gain a point of ruin for every uh for every weak point that comes up however you can mark a piece of armor to remove all ruin yeah. and you want to do that in this case because it brings you up to five if you don't uh, okay so all right so uh when you do your narrative part vendrick i want you to say how you deliver the killing blow and how your armor takes takes the uh the brunt of it to prevent yeah. you from getting ruined all right <laughs> so let's start with hudyar um yeah please describe how you know in this combat you take out one of your uh one of your enemy one or both of your enemies <sighs> i think hudyar you know has been whispering with the with the sort of milky white eyes and then just that sits bolt upright and starts screaming like keening and the shadow grows in size and breaks into multiple like eels almost like a bunch of smaller ones and just you know just set upon one of the fish and the water's filled with blood and churning water and she screams like endlessly nice nice so do you take out two both of all of them in the water or if that's what the yeah i think so i think mm -hmm. and I, then i think the one that's left in the boat is a more pressing problem at that mm -hmm. point yeah for sure so i'm i'm leaning over the canoe and i do observe how how you deal with the ones in the water and then i remember oh shit, there's there's one right be behind me and um Masero has has barely scratched it uh, maybe stepped at it once and then yeah. uh, turned away and uh, <laughs> it's 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 looking my direction with this gaping maw uh coming closer it's it's rubbing near me and um i'll i'll have to um yeah uh, um oh, what's the word again um it's going to snap at my feet mm -hmm and um i have to kick it you know and um it will swallow my shoes my, my beautiful slippers and choke on them <laughs> i love it oh my god <laughs> and then you've got like this this fish right, very, right. it's not very heroic but i killed it Yes, yes, you did by choking. Oh my god. Uh, so please mark off your slippers to prevent that ruin <laughs> from hitting you. That was brilliant. Oh my gosh. Just wiping off my dueling blade. Well done. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. I love these characters so much now. <laughs> um, for d- delivering the killing the killing choke, I guess. Um, please, Vendrick, uh, roll. Uh, let's see. Six. Six mm-hmm. gold. So it's six dice. Yes. Okay, let's see. Zero. <laughs> yeah. the oh, that work. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, it happens sometimes. Damn it. Um. Crap. Okay. So, yeah. Well done, sir. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. Yes, I'm so sorry. Yes, we did, like you know this is a perfect time for a break. Now that you survived the battle and found nothing, God dang! All right, so let's go ahead and take our 10 minute break for this, and then we'll be back at the 40 mark. Okay, cool. so see you then. <laughs> Everyone, see you soon. Okay. So, <clears throat> I imagine Vendrick has kicked <laughs> kicked off the choked out uh, carcass off of the boat and the other two were dispatched by uh, Hudyar's uh, shadow shadow creature Um, don't know if you want to explore the mangrove tree a little bit more you know since you're still around it is the monkey still up there I, you know, I, I thought I wrote it down and it's like, I didn't. Did you take that as the devil's bargain that the monkey got away? Or was it the fish in the boat? Took, we took the fish in the boat. So, fish in the yeah, boat, the monkey okay. should still be there. Yeah, the monkey is uh, just, uh, you know, looking a little surprised and just uh, kind of uh, has remained in the branches and was kind of warily seeing what you what you are doing now that you've dispatched the the fish they don't seem to have anything um uh in their in their hands in their paws to <clears throat> to fling <laughs> um but i think once the magic ends like and hujar's shadow comes back she looks a bit sweaty and pale at first and then dabs away at her forehead and then gives Masero this look like only a Naganese person could of like, kind of like a recognizing smirk of like, you you tried to let us die, game recognizes game kind of thing. Like, I see I'm also tired. There, <laughs> gives it this look and then like, like raises her eyebrow and then goes and walks over to the, the monkey and starts whispering in Naganese to the monkey, like trying to coax it down from the tree. Okay. <clears throat> you want to go ahead and do a hunt roll for this? What specifically are you trying to to ask or speak with the monkey? I think I think it's an omen, so I'm trying to intercede basically. Mm. I, I, I think it's some one of the sisters or, or some other demon or god is trying to send us a message. So I, I want to know what the message is. Okay. Alright, so message. From Omen. It's getting. I'm getting. <clears throat> getting flashback to our our uh, Merc board games, uh, um, James. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, hunt roll. Um, what are you doing? Oh, the skill or equipment that you're using towards this. I think. Um... I think it's just deities and interpretation. Cool. I will totally take that. Two on the hunt roll, please. Oh, I got a two. That's terrible. I didn't lose all my t- my non-existent token. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> hmm. I think, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, I think this golden monkey listens to you and nods as if it understands. 
And then when it opens its mouth again, it laughs. It laughs at you and then <clears throat> kind of points. And then you realize that as you were speaking to it and approaching and such, I think you realize that you stepped in a nest of mangrove snakes. <laughs> They sh they're beautiful. They shimmer indigo with some gold stripes. I mean, you've stepped on them quite lightly, but it, you're in the middle of the nest right now. <laughs> what would you like to do? So, so Naganese people, like it's more pronounced than the royal family, but Naganese people are pretty like besties with snakes basically okay. in, ge in general it's kind of a cultural like staple of being the snake is kind of the symbol of the country mm -hmm. so although hajar is not from that bloodline mm -hmm. i would like to try and convince the snakes not to bite me okay. you know and i'm thinking maybe like just like a risk roll and using Absolutely. like in interpretation to try and Oh, I might, I might just like, I'm just trying to think of what I could use. Maybe, maybe I'll put a snake amulet into my items. Okay. Like, a, like maybe I just have like a snake amulet. Um, it seems like the sort of thing an Agonese person would have. Sure. And I'm going to show them my snake amulet. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> pardon. So definitely, um, well, okay. So, <laughs> risky what do we think can go wrong you're gonna get bit i mean that's that's the that's the basic that's the basic point and these are venomous snakes i will say so i mean like every snake charmer is gonna is gonna have some serious ass risk of getting bit and like you know um by the you even the snakes that they charm so it's fine um but that's definitely what could go wrong <laughs> you get bit Anybody have anything else that they want to say is going wrong? The snakes speak to you in terrible prophecy. Vendrick, anything? What else could go wrong? <laughs> I mean... If you make it out, the monkey will follow you and keep laughing at you. Oh, jeez! Wow. I don't mean to the make this monkey obnoxious, but yeah, I mean, it could be, <laughs> you know? The monkey is like that monkey in Chinese mythology, the one that the jokes the monkey and just mm. sort of follows me around. Mm. Oh, man. Um, that could be also Devil's Bargain, too, so yeah. who knows? <laughs> Oh yeah. lord. Okay. <clears throat> but for Let's that bargain, I thought like no matter what, um, the the snakes will take a liking to you, and maybe oh, man. one or two will will actually stick to you, lay eggs on you, whatever. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> wow, we haven't even gotten to that point yet. But I, I mean, wow, I'm already liking where this is going. Yeah, Let's build the die. <laughs> Let's go the dice. <laughs> um, light dive for something you are skilled at, occupation background, or useful equipment. So you're using the snake amulet. That's one. And like, you know, I'll definitely take your interpretation background as part of this. Um, and then like definitely risking body for sure, because, you know, met in, in the middle of the nest of venomous snakes for sure. And then your devil's bargain is to <laughs> have a couple of the snakes be, be besties with uh, Hudyar. Is that what it is? <laughs> Hendrick. Oh, yeah, man. and maybe chat drawing on what Mark said. Maybe also they talk to me as well. Yeah. So they that kind of a bit of a bit of column A and a bit of column B. They, they, right, they right, know right. you. They know you. Yeah. Oh man, it's like they recognize you as one of their own kind You're of thing. That guy. You know, that person. Um, uh, I, I will. I will. I will stretch one of those things like a little bit further, for the devil's bargain. So I'm thinking, no matter what. Um, the things that these particular snakes will say. It's like they pretend to higher knowledge. And mm -hmm. they say to you that it will take so many 
curses upon your head to um, make reparation for your sister or your your siblings curses you know that sort of thing like something something so portentous that it's like ah yeah never mind your never yeah, but... mind your physical burdens it's like it's your it's your mental it's your mental and, and arcane burdens that are going to be like on, like on your butt so that's my devil's bracket. I, I have a feeling that like don't listen to snakes because they're liars is the equivalent of look both ways when you're crossing the road and <laughs> um, let's, let's um let's try this you didn't know you didn't oh. know that you were gonna oh no what Oof. oh no, no oh. that's the most I kind of needed a six. That's good and bad. I, I needed to succeed, but I also wanted my room to go up. Uh, okay, I, I needed so... something. That's awesome. I so, like okay, it. so six, thanks, six, thanks, six I dark, hated. six dark. So you definitely succeed, and you're <clears throat> you're you're talking with the with the snakes to get them to not harm you, but but um, yeah, your ruin goes up. So do you want to? say how you are getting uh more oh, lost to the environment i know exactly what so i'm just 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 riffing off something someone said so one of the snakes kind of climbs you know along round around her jaw's neck around her sort of like throat onto her like uh, collarbone and then just disappears and instead of a snake there's a big tattoo of a snake that now big um, goes around her neck like an aerobarus um oh so the, the the snakes now are uh, like kind of a tattoo i love it i absolutely love it so yeah your ruin goes up oh no um <clears throat> oh my gosh yep yeah snake is on now a tattoo for sure holy crap that's amazing and I think um, in Naganese, her jaw will whisper, firstly, like, thank you, friends. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> oh, um, Vendrick, for losing your slippers, do you want me to give you the condition marsh feet? <laughs> sure. Yep. <laughs> I like that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, and then, um, let's see. I can't. The problem with the with the with me seeing the dice rolls is that I can't back it up. But, um, Masera, was it you that lost all the tokens? <laughs> oh, okay. I think it was, was me. That was me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's right. Because you and Donald encountered something terrible. Um, no, I think I think that's enough that <laughs> you got you got uh, the, like you got combat started, which was great. So never mind. <laughs> I just wanted to remember. Sometimes I forget to, to give conditions in the moment. So that's why I wanted mm. to just double check. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> yeah, you're, you know, they've dispersed, uh, you know, at your, at your, uh, at your speaking uh, to them, but then making those, <laughs> those wonderful statements. Um, and then now you have the snake as a tattoo. Um, I don't think the others had seen this. Maybe they were still busy, like, kind of, like, dragging up the boat <clears throat> to this particular mm -hmm. floating island. I mean, like, it is, I guess, mostly encompassed by this tree. And the, the, the small monkey, actually, is, like, just kind of, like, shaking their head at this point, just kind of amazed <laughs> that, you're, that you're doing so well. Well, um... <laughs> And it's just like kind of watching maybe if like the others approach or, or are you guys staying in the boat? What do you think? What do you want to do, Masero? Does it seem like there's like much purchase to stand on here with the roots kind of? Yes, because <clears throat> yeah, even though it's even though it's floating, like, you know, I think that it's floating by virtue of of like the the packed marsh mud that's around mm -hmm. it so mm -hmm. it's kind of like got this like kind of hovering type of look to it but i mean like you know that its roots are are long and like just dragging right into the into the muck so yeah, <clears throat> yeah there's there's enough purchase because i mean again it's pretty long long standing here in this in this marsh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah then i think michelle will definitely pop off and start poking around and seeing uh, what this monkey is hiding 
<laughs> poke, it, poke around on the island, yeah. see if uh, I can find anything. Yeah, maybe, <clears throat> yeah, if you want to do a hunt roll for sure. I yeah, mean, like, and, yeah. and everybody else is welcome to try hunt rolls as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, like, I think the monkey is, like, kind of, like, turning on its perch in the branches and just kind of, like, watching you mm-hmm. now that now that its attention is away from Hudyar. Um, can I try to use command and say, like, monkey, we've passed your trials. Show us where your treasure is hidden. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. I'll I'll take it. I mean, if you want to, <clears throat> if you want to uh, call upon that skill, sure. Yeah. Maybe you're maybe more maybe you're more used to ordering about like underlings, but yeah, you know, to you the monkey's just <laughs> just like another one. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Sure. So uh, hunt. Uh, yeah. Show us your show us your stuff. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So two light two light die on the hunt roll, please. Mm, that's a three. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're having the best of luck, Macero. It's great. <clears throat> it's wonderful. So. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> You'll love this. <clears throat> so I'm going to say that as you are, you know, kind of doing your overbearing command of the monkey the monkey will just calmly look at you sit in its perch a little bit further in and then just smile at you and then its eyes kind of like go off into uh, like off to the side and I think I I think I think you see something that looks like it's like branches right starts off looking like li- like little branches <laughs> that look like they're encrusted with <clears throat> salt or minerals or something and or hanging jewels. off right or jewels <laughs> who knows what Macero's saying but they also have like leaves and mud stuck to it and it's, it's kind of like moving through the water and like tufts of hair like stuck to it and such and so forth but I think as <clears throat> as the as you as you follow the gaze of the monkey it's like this thing is approaching and bursting out of the water with a mournful bellow is a what looks like a mud encrusted goat. The branches were actually its horns. Hmm. And you can see the shaggy bearded face <clears throat> and and such, like just kind of laid laden with like some of this mud. As well as it's like, you know, fur. And it's got very bleary looking eyes, like looking very balefully at you. Um, Goat, are you our treasure? You know, and then it's like, uh, yes. So it's just like, you know, it comes up upon land, like onto the roots and just looks at you. So. Arrow looks expectantly at it. Mm-hmm. So this could be combat you unless you want to do something to reduce <laughs> its endurance. Um, if it looks like it's going to attack, maybe maybe it's time to bust out the <laughs> web or smite. Um, I think web would make more sense here. Mm-hmm. If it's looking like, here we go again. I don't think we're going. Yeah, to do this. I mean, Let's it's. Yeah, it's kind of got that like it's kind of got that that um, that air of like, like hunched, trying to make mm, itself like, look bigger and lowering mm. its head and its horns towards you, but still Not keeping the still keeping still one, keeping that gaze on you, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm familiar with being bullied by goats. Let's go. Oh no. <laughs> Oh shit! Okay, so <clears throat> your risk—you're doing a risk roll first, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. My web. Ritual what could get, What could go wrong, huh? I think you know one of the things that could go wrong. I'm not saying it would, but I mean, like, just could go wrong is that you know it's able to <clears throat> repel your spell for some reason, and so therefore, you know, you don't get it before it charges at you. 
that definitely could go wrong. I think it might work too well. So uh, <laughs> you get stuck as well. And oh, way. shit. <laughs> Love this. That's great. Bad feedback. Okay. The only thing I can think of is that it's like... Oh, no, so I was just thinking of like a, maybe the the goat is somehow like I don't know. There's like an army of spiders or something that come out and start to respin the web. Like the only mm. creatures here are kind of in cahoots. Basically. Oh my god! <clears throat> Damn. Great. Amazing. Okay, let's build some dye here. Um, okay, so you're definitely taking a dark dye for using a ritual. Light dye, if this is something you are skilled at because of your occupation or background or equipment. Yeah. The, the, is, does the ritual count as the thing? Well, ritual is, for the, is, is covering the dark dye, but I mean, like, okay, do you cool. have anything with your particular uh, skills? I'm like, this I'll, is the, like, I'll it, take like it. grand ritual. You're trying, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to be like the, the, the hunter, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, assert dominance basically. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And then accepting that second light die for a devil's bargain. What do yeah, we got yeah, yeah. <laughs> for no matter what? So we, we don't know what's, what exactly this creature is, right? It resembles a goat. That's all Angry you know goats. at the moment. Angry swamp goat. So no matter what, it does. There, there's also a um, a baby goat, <laughs> and it's it's its mother and. Um, <clears throat> We have to deal with that in which way ever. Mm. You know, take care of it or kill it as well. <laughs> as it's a very cute baby girl. Oh no. <clears throat> I think. Hmm. Oh, I know. No matter what, I think, you know, whether you take it out or, you know, it's, it's giving you problems in combat, it's going to scream like the kindly followers of the Piper. It's going to scream like, you know, people that you know, mm -hmm. people that, you know, that, that you've heard. Sounds before. like their music kind of. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's going to do, it's going to do that to totally fuck you with you. <laughs> nice. I like that one as well. Yeah, I'm going to take that I like one. I think that's great. One. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> so, uh, two light, one dark on your risk. Roll light, plus. one dark. Mm. Six. Six dark. dark. If it's higher than your ruin, your Ooh. ruin goes up by one unless you want to use some armor. Um, I can't use armor on a wrist roll, right? Yeah. Oh, no, that's right. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Five Please. ruin. <laughs> Five ruin. Okay. So not only is it screaming at you in the in the music and the words of the Piper, of uh, mm. Piper's followers, it's like, is, is this what's bringing you to, to further ruin, or is this yeah, something else? Yeah, I think so. That's, like, okay. totally messing with me. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right. So there you go, then. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I, but... I think the Pipers took care of me when I was exiled. So that's, oh, no. Like, like, oh, am I gonna... I can't... Is it one of them? No, so you're... So, I oh, no. Transform into a goat? But... Well, I mean, regardless I of that, just, though... I can't... Yeah, regardless yeah. of regardless of yeah. like your your emotions though, your spell goes off. Like you know, so you are able to yeah. to fling a web <clears throat> on this thing to kind of like yeah, and he's like pulling know. like pulling webs out of the air okay. and kind of like weaving it like that way and casting. Okay. Away. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's screaming at you even as it's like you know being held at the moment. So reduction at the moment. Anybody else want to do? A risk roll on this to help reduce, so or do we go right to combat? Reduced by by two now. Oh yeah, that's right. It's reduced by two for the six. 
And mm -hmm. yeah. I, I picture um, uh, Vendrick not being close by, you know, um, he, he has to um, walk around bare feet, um, squelching on the ground. Yes. And he turns around and says, oh my god, that's... Let's make a gash. <laughs> and I think... I... The... Sorry? That just feels I think Hoja's completely unaware of what's going on because mm. she's sitting under the tree, like, you know, Buddha under the Bodhi tree, just like, <laughs> like nice. not... not... Yeah, and I've, I've got a ranged weapon, so oh, um, great. probably it doesn't oh, there you go. help. No, yeah. you you can you can totally do this. And then there's a special there's a special rule for this, which mm -hmm. I'm just gonna pull. Give me a second. I'm gonna pull to page eighteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> ranged weapons in combat. All right. So let's see. Ranged weapons may be used to reduce a monster's endurance by putting your ammunition and the use of your weapon at risk. So ranged weapons start with three slots of ammunition, which we know. Make a risk roll to reduce endurance as normal, but instead of a devil's bargain, instead of a devil's bargain, you're going to add a light die for each unmarked slot of ammunition you're willing to risk. Okay? And then if the roll comes up for each light die that comes up a one, a two, or a three, that's the mark of ammunition that... <clears throat> That you that you check off, okay. When you have no more unmarked slots, you can no longer use the weapon, okay. Okay, so I could uh, refresh um, after the incursion if we played a campaign or so, right? <coughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. I've okay. got a what's it called? An assassin's blowgun. Okay. So, how many of your ammunition are you willing to risk? Um, so, I will get a light die for a skill I'm using as well? Yes, for each... Well, uh, yes, you will get... Hold on, let me see. Yes, you will get the light die for the skill piece of equipment or occupation thing that you're using, okay? Mm -hmm. And the second light die is using a ranged weapon in combat rather than a de that rather than a devil's bargain yeah okay so um correct me if i get it wrong but i say i'm going to use my skill poison because it's an assassin's blowgun okay and um i'm gonna put in two of my three potential slots nice for okay so it's a three light okay you will well, you will not mark it unless unless Mm. Unless the uh, light die comes up a one, a two, or a three, okay? When you okay. make this risk roll. So you're rolling with two light, one dark, for uh, risk two body. Okay. Sorry, what's that? You're three light, right? Uh, hold on. Three light. Oh, that's right. You're using two, two, two pieces of ammunition. So three light, one dark, yes. Sorry. <clears throat> um, and I'm also, because I'm far away, I'm also at risk for the... <laughs> because I was thinking, okay, I'm, I'm so far away, I'm not really in danger. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I see. I see. Um... Unless you fictionally say uh, there's uh, something else. I'm going to say risk to mind. The reason mm. being is that it's like, you know, by doing this ranged attack, you're going to gain the attention of the goat, and the goat has an unnerving stare. Okay. Yeah. So, That's three cool. light, so one dark. <laughs> right. That's a five. And, okay. oh, I'm going to lose two of my um, ammunition. But five light. Or you can do an add dark die and re-roll and then like and then uh, see if you get yeah. something better. That is up to you. You don't have to, but <laughs> But but um just just out of curiosity, um mm -hmm. if I re roll the um, ammunition marked, they they would stick for that next roll? The second yes. roll is what you would take for it. Yeah, the, the the that that next roll would be what you would we would call yeah. your you know what you would mark. 
so you might not mark off any ammunition. Yeah, and it's, yeah. again, this you risk it for a biscuit when you do these things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a five is a success. Is there with like complication. a consequence? Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a complication with this. I think I'll I'll reroll. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how that a box. <laughs> Ooh! There we go. Okay. Oh wow! <laughs> okay. So you only mark one and well, hold on, two. Oh, it is two ammunition. Sorry, because it's yes. like the two and the three. Yep. No. So you mark off those two ammunition. Only the, only the, the light. Only light. Yeah. So it's just one. It's just the light. Oh, light die. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Only yeah. Uh, this is the one. Okay. okay. Perfect. Wow. This is why I need like people to to, to, yeah. to keep these rules straight. Okay. So mm. one mark of ammunition. Great. And you totally succeed with six, but mm -hmm. it's dark. So tell me how your your ruin goes up. Like, tell me what you see or sense that just makes you get more lost in your environment. I mean, you said um, it's it's harm to mind, right? Yeah, the goat, so... like you know, like you know, you 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 fire off your your darts, and you definitely <clears throat> hit. And I think this is where the gaze moves from Macero to you. Tell me what you tell me what you see in the goat's eyes. That strikes you uncanny and affects you. What do you see? Has the eyes of someone I poisoned in the past. And I used that poison on I'm currently using for the blowgun. <laughs> Quite human looking, very strange, very strange, but yeah, it holds you in your gaze. It's like, but you do. It's like that poison is, is taking effect even as you're seeing these things. So, so we've reduced it by four already. Is that right? Huh, yeah. Nice. It's all very cool. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. Um, maybe it's just one because it wasn't a ritual. Where's that specific rule about, like, you know, how much it affects? Because, <clears throat> I mean... I mean, wh whatever you, you think is, is correct, we should roll with that. I mean, if it's... Me personally, it's like, you know, if it's, if it's like, you know, called on a six, I mean, like, you know, that makes sense that it's like it's mm. <clears throat> like a critical... Like a kind of like yeah. a critical hit. So, I mean, like, cool. I'm, I'm willing to, to reduce it by, by two. Yeah. regardless so and it's also poison so i mean you know <clears throat> so that's cool all right awesome now <laughs> if hoodyar is not doing anything are we starting combat because yeah i mean like even though it's it's got uh vendrick in its gaze it's like it's going to charge and the yeah. two of us can't join in combat because we oh yeah action. that's true and then oh that's right hoodyar is like you know like doing boot under the under the bow kind of thing <clears throat> Shit. Uh, interesting. I mean, Masaru could make a risk roll to not get hit. True. You know, as it's straining against the webbing, <clears throat> maybe. <laughs> you know, to see if it's going to. And I and I want to say also too that the horns, like you know, somehow it's still keeping a gaze on on Vendrick. But then mm. it's also, it's also like kind of like moving its head back and forth as it's doing so, like very hypnotically probably. Mm -hmm. But this is sawing through the webbing. Yeah. You know, so it's trying to break free. Okay. Stepping so. back as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and we don't. I mean, like you know, it could just be a bunch of uh, could be a bunch of risk rolls at this point. I mean, like you know, there is the choice of running away. Yeah, we don't have to mm -hmm. engage in combat. <clears throat> Although it's like, it's reduced, um, but that is up to you. And all the while, while it's got the gaze on Vendrick Macero, it's still, it's still making these like you know wonderful sounds of the Piper. Maybe it's putting you into a particular state. Mm. What song do you hear coming from the goat's mouth that just makes you feel like you are back with, with the followers? I think it's a it's a, a healing song. It's a song that like when I was I, I think when I was exiled, I like 
ran off into the forest, which was the worst idea I've ever had in my life. And the uh, the Piper song, me. This is the song they used to sort of make me not dead. It's quite compelling. <clears throat> Hujar, I think you do hear this, but yet you hear as very mournful sounds that the goat is making. It's like, <laughs> Does it break through your concentration at all? Um... So Hujar is convinced that the snake that is now the tattoo was an avatar of the old serpent, which is like a sort of version of the faith of Nagane that you find in corners of the world. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's said that anyone who survives a contact with the old serpent has her blessing and can speak the language of serpents and see through their eyes. And she just hears the, the hit, everything is hissing, like like a white noise machine, just hissing oh, no. all around, <laughs> all all is hissing. <clears throat> and she she is going to try and ask a, bre a blessing from grandmother, which is what uh, those who worship the old serpent call her, okay. and make an offering to find Seeker's Rest. Mm, mm. Hut roll then, huh? Mm. So okay. deities, like I'm, pre I'm pretty sure this is a god, like a snake god, a, like a, a version of the snake cult. Right, right. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna ask my tattoo where we oh. need to go. Okay. All right. Great. Uh. Yeah, definitely the skill for sure. And then you're asking the question, so go ahead and make two on the hunt roll, please. So Hopa sort of cursed punt rolls of uh oh nice finally some good luck i got a six nice get a token please <clears throat> okay yeah i think even as you're sitting there and hearing the hissing i think you are hearing in the hissing like in the old language of nagane it's almost like a chant, a poem, a direction of sound and vision. What sense is activated when you see the, the floating city, <clears throat> when you see this floating city of Seeker's Rest in your mind's eye? Do you smell? Sense or smell? I'll sense, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What is the smell of? It's taste, but with the, like a snake with the tongue. So yes. her tongue, mm. her head snaps back and her tongue starts like, yeah. you know, flickering out of her, tasting the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You taste the ma the mangroves on the <clears throat> on the city of Seeker's Rest. However, you're also tasting something dry and like dusty. Not uh, dusty. What's it's like? Kind of crunchy, but yet like dried wheat. Thatch is what you're what you're tasting along with this mangrove thing. Um, and like you know you're mind's eye is asking you to head to one of the islands that has a ruined hut on it first and that will be your next direction before you can find the city so and with that um her head sort of goes comes down and her eyes open and she she says are you quite done fighting that animal i know where we must go i mean the goat hasn't gotten out of the webbing yet so i mean like mm -hmm. there's the chance of getting the hell away <laughs> do we want to do we want to get this thing while it's all webbed up 
Get some more gold, maybe. I mean, I think sufficient enough time has passed that, you know, you could mm -hmm. you could definitely do a combat roll at this point. And then, you know, uh, or you could just run away and then, like, you know, head over to the place with the with the ruined hut. <laughs> that is up to you. Yeah, I think I've got to silence this the, the the bleeding song. So okay. Oh my god, that's that's more horrible. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, yeah, I've got to make, just stop this. Just stop this noise. It's not going to oh, stop. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Fair. So, yeah. <clears throat> Dueling sword out. Yeah. Okay. So while it's still still bound, you know, and like you've both reduced its ruin, uh, ruin, its endurance enough to to make this viable, who is participating? Let me ask you that first. So definitely Macero, Vendrick, are you are you participating uh, participating anyway or no? No, I'm still salty because of the fish. Okay, yeah. okay, that's fine. Okay. So the so, first round, I'm not going to. Sure. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so you with this dueling sword i think you're going to have to get up a lot closer you don't you're not using a ranged weapon for this so oh, no 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 yeah i'm gonna come up and try to okay. slaughter this goat sure okay so weak point please a one fantastic all right okay now with this do 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 you're gonna just roll one dark die Mm-hmm. Yep. There we go. <laughs> dark, dark, dark. It's a one. <laughs> oh my god, what? <laughs> and it's not defeated yet. Oh my god. I'm definitely gonna have to mark off my uh stiff little cloak to prevent that ruin. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. It gets caught up in the goat's horns. I, I come in all fancy. Yep, exactly. Rips it off. Oh You're that trying. was too that was that would have gone through my ribs that was too close exactly exactly all right so second round <laughs> mm -hmm. bendrick are you I, helping now i gotta put my hand I'm like i've got this go L let me have this one are you are you are you serious it's like you, you don't want yeah. to you know, oh yeah okay bendrick you don't have to worry about it then. <laughs> you can you can still do it if you want to but i'm i'm waving you off yeah yeah i i think okay uh let's see how this goes then Holy shit, okay. So two dark dice. <laughs> Since second round, we're adding a dark die. There we go. I'm lowering my, my blow gun and I'm watching now. Mm-hmm. It's a seven. Okay. Alright. Uh so no <clears throat> no weak point struck, so like no more ruin, thank goodness. Um and you definitely have defeated it. Yes. Please tell me how how this looks as you as you make the killing blow on this on this creature. I think I get like that first come in with the with the cloak like it got in, and then I knew like I just had to kind of uh, kind of like go into the like get close enough that the horns wouldn't be a a threat like get in between like right up at its <laughs> like forehead and yeah. just like sink the sword like down into its like not even like a slash just sort of like coming up close and just like slowly like slide in the saber down into its like the back of his head and... yeah i'm gonna say like you know probably the adv other advantage was the fact that the cloak was getting tangled up in its horns so it couldn't mm -hmm. get purchased on on trying to slash you with them yeah. it was either the webbing or you and then yeah it was just too tangled and like you know on a on a bonus for fendrick it's like you know the gaze was broken so you know you were able to <laughs> like not be as entranced okay great so uh go ahead and make a for oh gold, gold, roll for three. <laughs> three. Three. Hey, there's a gold. There's Boom. a gold. Okay. All right. So that one you would definitely put in your gold count. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think I'd like to turn in my hunt token for something off of this as well. Sure. Absolutely. If like I could take like one of the horns or part of a horn for like if it's crusted with something valuable or... I, I um, it it, it turns out it's it turns yeah. out it was like it was salt, a mm. lot of salt. So, um, actually, I think you find something even more valuable. Ooh. So I think tangled up, 
because again it was it was mud encrusted it had like a lot of things tangled up in its horns as well as in its fur but i think underneath it's like very shaggy beard once you dispatch it and it collapses in your webbing i mean maybe by this time the webbing has kind of like started to melt or what have you <clears throat> i think you'll see that for some reason like underneath the the goat's beard there is like some kind of tattered golden cord and with the cord is what looks like a bone dagger and it's carved in the shape of a winged serpent that is your treasure nice <clears throat> gingerly extract that mm -hmm. slide it in my belt yep <clears throat> okay now we are done with the goats <laughs> now we're done with the beast gaze is broken no more piping call <clears throat> excuse me and uh yeah hoodyar you've got the you've got that that smell taste of the mangroves but also like that thatched hut that's that's in your vision as well because that you you feel it like you feel like you're you you you're biting down or or like kind of feeling like the the texture of the thatch in your in your in your nostrils <clears throat> so yeah you can head over to the next place that is seen by the parting mists which is a ruined hut with a thatched roof in the distance I think by now like <laughs> with all your with all your back and forth here I think it's like the it seems like it's the light of of uh evening but I mean again the, the weird canopy the weird twisting mm. Uh, branches and the mists like just kind of give it an impression of being later than it actually is so it might be still mid-afternoon and you see the shadowed slant of this hut on this island of uh, marshes and I suppose we were taking the canoe again or can we walk there mm -hmm. I think it's in the distance still like you have to take the canoe because i mean like you know there's just this patch of roots and mud that you were on for the mangrove tree um i think as you approach the ruined hut island though i think you're gonna see there's a long pale figure crouched on the floor crouched on the shore watching you their features are quite pale their eyes are red rimmed and also like pale they seem to be not clothed because you can see their mu their very muscular abs but they're caked in mud it's caked and streaked in mud and they're watching you all approach on the canoe When you get to the island, do you <clears throat> go to the hut or do you go to this individual? The hut belongs to the individuals so and maybe hail them. They don't say anything back. They just, they keep looking at you. But if you get closer then, then maybe <clears throat> then maybe uh, 10 paces away, they will immediately jump away from you and dive into the water. Their long dreadlocked hair, like just kind of looking like um, a tail, like tendrils, tendrils in the tail in the water. And you are all alone with the hut. <laughs> Does the as the the figure sort of swims away, Hudja looks and says, "The swamp watches us, but we know that what lies next is within this place." And I think she's gonna like try and look inside the hut. 
<clears throat> yeah. I think this hut is just... It's... You definitely see the thatch that you were tasting earlier, Hudyar. And then the rest of it is kind of like... Um, kind of like dried, caked mud that's been put together, but there's bits of it that's kind of crumbling away. Um, it's a... It's a simple shelter. It has an open doorway. And you can't really see in here because of the dimness of no real windows, except for maybe like, sla like slits in the walls <clears throat> and through some of the crumbling, crumbling holes, perhaps. You can't tell if there's anything in here, at least not yet, as your forms fig uh, fill the doorway with shadow. I will keep guard outside. <laughs> I will uh, smile and uh, say, I am the one that walks in darkness, not here. And um, I have like this, um, I have my like, basically like this totem, this kind of crude looking like carved totem that that Nahuja pulls out of um you know her robes and holds up and starts to speak and i basically want to do a hunt roll which is using my absorb ritual to suck nice. all the darkness out of the sure. building nice. Mm -hmm. nice yeah i'll take that <clears throat> when you when somebody activates a ritual to to do a hunt roll do you still like you know impart some sort of risk though with it I think it's sort of, I was thinking of doing it as like fictional positioning okay. rather than, you okay. know, cool. if that's okay. That is okay. I mean, I just wanted to find out because it's like, you know, I've, I've come up against that and I'm like, you know, do I just add that a fictionally or do I make you do a risk roll instead, you know? And I'm like, I want to be fair. I mean, like, I want to be like, you can totally do a hunt roll. That makes perfect sense. So if you're just using it fictionally to, to just yeah. kind of take away some of the darkness, I'm cool with that. That okay. That's all I want to do. Yeah. I don't want anything. Yeah. I got a six, so yeah. All right, perfect. All right, so you get a token. Great. <clears throat> oh, you're going to love this. So, very bare bones uh, in this hut. It's actually pretty neat inside, even though it's like it's kind of crumbling on the outside and there's, there's holes from where the, the mud has, has kind of come away. But it looks very comfortable here. It's like the thatch as like part of it's like here creating like some sort of bedding and then like there's like a cloth of sorts like linen that's covering it and and just making some kind of bedding and then there's like a simple like wooden uh cup and wooden um plate but i think you'll see it in, instead of what looks could be a pillow you see what looks like a book Definitely going to take book. Okay. Uh, do you? Oh, well, I should have asked first. It's like, are you using one of your hunt tokens towards this or no? I will or... use both of my hunt tokens because a book is probably something fancy. This is quite fancy. On the cover, which is bound in faded green leather with gold trim, Eternal Glory is the title. And as you're flicking through it, it has beautiful illustrations. And it is a book about legendary heroes and their deeds. Am I in there? <laughs> I think, I think when, you, when you say that, like, Pajar just gives you this look of, like, deep, deep contempt. <laughs> like, utter contempt. But that is yours. <laughs> Eternal glory. Did kill that goat, so. <laughs> Soften up that fish for you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Amazing. Yeah. So. Ooh, bless whomever sneezed. <laughs> 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 okay. 
R.I.P. But yes, I mean, <clears throat> Eternal Glory is, was sitting there and uh, you don't see anything else. I don't know if anybody else wants to like look around the, the rest of the island or around the hut. I think I'm outside. I didn't hear that conversation. <laughs> Walking around the hut. Okay, that's fine. Maybe there's like a little garden or some bench okay. or whatever. Okay. All right, so you're going to explore the world and then which of your skills or from occupation or background are you trying to use? Or a piece of equipment that you can also use as well. Let's see. You know what, I'm gonna put on that camouflage mask I got mm. to not raise any suspicion. I'm afraid that creature or whatever it was might come back, mm. see me alone. So I'm, I'm uh, trying not to stick out too much. Okay, cool. And stay low and, and you know, explore a bit. Okay, that's fine. All right, so <clears throat> yeah, go ahead and make uh, two on the hunt roll, please. What's the three? Okay. <laughs> God! <laughs> That's terrible. I am so sorry. <laughs> no worries. Oh my gosh. Um. So I, p I picture myself being crouched very low mm -hmm. and then maybe I look up or to the side or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think... Hmm. I think you didn't realize it, but I mean, this side of this little island is close to the water. And I think <clears throat> as you're looking around, you see something kind of gleaming in what looks like a, a garden patch. Um, like it's, it's half in, but half out of the, uh, the patch itself, maybe covered over a little bit in some of the plant, the plant life. But as you're looking and maybe reaching for it, you see in the water that's near the edge, you see some of those bulbous eyes again. I'm going to, going to retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> um, maybe, just maybe, um, like, you know, the bulbous eyes come out a little further and like you hear behind you, like the distinct <laughs> as if something's coming up from the water as you're running <laughs> around, the, around the hut. Do you tell your companions? Uh. I, I enter the hut and say, we, we can't stay too long. I think there's more of those fish. What do you want to do? There, there's not a door on the hut, is there? No, there's, it's, an, it's an open doorway. Okay. Jujar, I think this is your uh, <laughs> your call. Anything else here that we your mistakes are telling you about? I think um, Hoja, just without any words, just like turns around and walks out of the hut and, you know, puts the book away and starts tasting the air again. Mm hmm You can <clears throat> you can definitely get the scent of the mangrove in your nostrils and your mouth again. And it's <clears throat> leading you in a particular direction, like when you make a turn. But I will say, like in your peripheral vision, as you're making the turn to get the get the taste of the mangrove again, it's like you hear the flopping, flopping, clawing of of what's coming up from behind the hut, <laughs> coming closer. I'll give Vendrick a little nudge. He's like, "We found a book about heroes." <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be in that book someday. <laughs> Sure. She, she found a book. Yeah. 
yeah so who i'm gonna say who you you have a direction that you can go in but yeah it depends on if you guys want to try to combat or if you want to like run away <laughs> and push off in the canoe yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, Huja will will tell us where to go. <laughs> Huja doesn't run away. Huja simply moves hastily in the correct direction. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, it's still like it's still unseen, right? I mean, like you've still got like you know some of the heavy mist is kind of moving back and forth, as well as some shapes moving in in the distance. So <clears throat> it's not walkable <laughs> let's put it that way you'll still have to canoe it for sure i'm i'm gonna say i will make sure everyone gets into the canoe and then <laughs> i um maybe i'm not sure what what's the exact plant life there but maybe there's like a way to to escape those creatures and maybe that's a hunt roll or maybe it's a risk roll it's, it's up to you Matt but I'd like to uh, improvise and and you know get us um, somewhere navigate us into like maybe there's floating bush or whatever or okay I'll take that overgrown. sure <clears throat> yeah, I can give you some information. Yeah, you can totally do a hunt roll to get information about, <clears throat> about uh, like trying to um, disguise or yeah, camouflage your your escape. <clears throat> yeah, if you want to do that for sure. All right, that's a five. Blood. Okay. <laughs> Five. Counter something terrible. Okay. I'll grab your token. <clears throat> All right. Um. Yeah, I think. I think as you're realizing that some of these some of this vegetation can be kind of torn out as you go along and kind of like disguising your your uh departure i think you're also pulling up um <clears throat> some other vegetation that seems to have woken up something there's something else in the water. It's not these, it's not these mud crawlers, <coughs> not these mud crawling fish, but I think it's like, you know, something similar to the snakes that were seen earlier by Hudyar. They're not making themselves known to the surface. You just see the movement as you're pulling out the vegetation and you know, that's not the roots. So, <clears throat> but for now, but for now, you are able to kind of disguise your uh, movement away from that particular island from the mud crawlers, but you can see that something else has gained gained attention. So, yeah. Given the closeness of this particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, to time, I'm going to say that that is maybe the the image that we see as you as you all pull out. <coughs> Vendrick is creating some distraction, some disguise for the boat. Maybe making, maybe making the canoe look like another floating, floating isle of vegetation. It's pretty cool. But I think as we see that, maybe we see like flicks and bobs in the water as something else seems to be trailing the boat from a discreet distance, but also following in its wake. And we see the canoe disappear into the mists, looking for the Seeker's Rest. And that is the end of our session for today. 
<clears throat> may we <laughs> may we get you out of uh out of uh, marsh <laughs> cradle and 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 finding seekers rest next time um stars and wishes for uh this particular session things that you liked about the gameplay role play each other and then wishes are things that you'd like to see for the future sessions oh uh, yeah I had a great time this was uh, a, a different trophy character that i'm used to playing so it's <laughs> interesting interesting to uh see how that interacts with the world um May, may have to have another character in a session or so, but we'll see how they go. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what Sarah was suited for the swamp necessarily, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, y'all, I, I, I really like the, the, the variety of, of the characters we have here. Um, both y'all have really like distinct, interesting uh, things that are very different from each other, so it's a lot of fun to do. The swamp is nasty and gross and super spooky, and I love it. Um, we're all gonna die. Uh, yeah, uh, which is I just want to see more. Yeah, I see get, get get out of this set and uh, see what what is worse than this. <laughs> yeah, and stars for Mads for running a great game as usual. <laughs> sure. I think I'll go next. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone. Um, I did enjoy Macero being, as a former royal, not really suited, <laughs> a bit naive, running away from the combat. That was that was a great moment um, with uh, the fish on the canoe. Uh, Aja is really fascinating and creepy, and I liked especially the snake becoming a tattoo. And um, the way you portrayed um, the world, that was really uh, cool, Mats. And um, I think the golden monkey uh, that stood out <laughs> being there, like more than it uh, might have. But um, yeah, it turned out to be quite uh, important to us in a way. And um, in terms of wishes, I, I hope we, we get to make it to the floating city and um, see whoever lives there, because that, that might be interesting to, to have some social interactions also, not just fighting. Bingo. Um... I think, yeah, yeah, like a big star. I like how nobody really wants to be in the swamp and everyone feels very done with it. But at the same time, I like how this feels because we've got more sessions so we can play it out. This feels a bit like a hex crawl and I really like it. It's like, yeah, like being in an OSR hex crawl. And I like that because we haven't solved the set, we're kind of stuck here until we get, you know, I like that. I, I think it, it was a very nice way to use the extra time, you know, so I, and I think we can sort of nip it in the bud next session and move on but it was it was nice to let it play out and i just think it was great that we just played off lots of the like um you know something terrible and it kind of generated its own story and i really enjoyed that and i and i i started the treasure hunters guide to nagane by darren brox which i used to make hajar uh there's some really good stuff in there if you you played a few games with the original trophy and you want gold and want to try something different. And also just I've been using Loom just to look things up about Nagano as I go. So yeah. Um uh, yeah, I've just really enjoyed it. And yeah, it's been it's been great as always, Mads. And everyone's characters are very, very well realized. And I'm really looking forward to next time. And that's my wish. Absolutely. Oh my God, these characters, I fell in love <clears throat> in all their horribleness, like halfway through the <laughs> halfway through this set. Holy crap. Amazing. Um, so I, I, I can't wait to see more of them next time. Hopefully they survive through the set, um, at least through the set. That would be great. Um, and then make it to Seeker's Rest. So that's a wish. Um, I loved all the character moments uh, for each of them. It's like, you know, 
<clears throat> Vendrick looking desperately through their book uh, and uh, through his book, and then Macero just being like, "I'm one and done. I did the dueling. I, I'm done." Yeah, I mean, like that was that was just so amazing. But then also pulling out the, "What do you hear?" And you heard like the Piper's followers, and then that like getting a bit of his backstory too. So it's kind of like, oh, he's he's it's kind of a himbo, but he's also really sad. Aw. You know, and then Hoodyar being so mysterious. I mean, I love that supplement that Darren came up with. Um, and then just like, you know, just enriching like the Nagane backs, the background and like, you know, some of the cultural things from this particular continent are just so nice to to hear and listen to. Um, screaming goat horror is a niche. <laughs> yes. Um, I automatic I automatically think of of I think it's a New Zealand horror that I saw like it's called Black Sheep so something very similar to that. Um, God yeah, into... that that's a that's a horrendous movie and I, I know, but it's that, so good. So... It's just so good. It's so it's so bad. It's so good. I mean, like I love it. So yes, watch that if you like if you like that that sort of horror. So it's great. Um, so many different uh, you know uh, callbacks in this particular. Um, set up i mean like i could i could see like it's swampy it's gross it's it's disgusting i feel bad that vendrick has no shoes now i <laughs> mean you know and uh but again like you know we'll we'll see we i do hope that uh you that you guys make it to the next uh set in relatively intact but i think it's hilariously funny that it's like you had the opportunity to be done but you wanted to just look into it a little bit more and you got into trouble it's great. This is the way this this game is supposed to work. I I just enjoyed it so much. The desperation is is real. <laughs> so, I'm excited for next session. Uh, you know, and I think we got through a lot of mechanics in this particular thing. Um, like my wish is to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, review more. And then like I forgot to offer the whole help roll thing. The help roll is very real, and it is possible to do so. So then this way you can kind of again help mechanically with someone else's role um for risk um so that's that's an option definitely on the table so like hopefully we'll get to see more of that next time but uh yeah we engaged with a lot of mechanics in this uh in this session and i can't wait to see more so you guys have a wonderful week happy gaming and i will see you next time okay to post this if okay perfect that would be great way too easy yes you know, I mean, have to always make the offer. Absolutely. Blow through those yeah, sets. The... Blow through those <laughs> sets. Right, exactly. We'll be done in like three sessions. It'll be great. Speed run. <laughs> Speed run, right. All right, wonderful. So again, happy gaming to you guys. Have a wonderful week. Oh, oh not no game next week. Right. No game next week. Okay. But we will be back in uh, the second week of June. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, all right. Take care. Thank you so much. See you next right. time. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>